Alright, so what's your name, where are you from, and why are you here today? I'm Brandy Lee Bragan. I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada. I've lived here since 1986. And what was the other question you asked? Why are you here today? Why am I here? Um, well, I was taking the bus down to uh, the library to apply for a job. And are you, uh, are you excited about the job prospects, working at a library? Uh, not at the library, just that I have to go online there at the library oh, to okay. use the computers and check email, etc. because I have just a prepaid Majesty phone, a pro Majesty phone. You can't really do it on that. It doesn't um, have enough memory. So what were you doing before uh, looking for a job? Uh, I mean, what did I do for occupation? I worked at the Win Las Vegas for 11 years. Prior to that, the Bellagio Hotel. I was a PBX trainer for the Win Las Vegas and then also a PBX operator for the Bellagio Hotel for five. And what's PBX? Is hotel operator. Like if you call and you want a wake up call or oh, okay. if you want to know anything about the hotel, restaurants, sh stores, shows, attractions, you call us. Credit line, we, we can't give out, but um, no personal information. But if you want to know where your room is, I can tell you where that is, etc. So is this a shrinking industry here? Uh, what do you mean? Did you, were you laid off? Or, uh no, no, no. I quit due to bullies and harassment, and someone was breaking into my car and stealing my CDs out of my um, car. And um, I told my management about it, and they didn't do anything about it. They didn't investigate it. So I got tired of it, and I quit. So this is a good move. This is an assertive move, getting away from an abusive situation. I had an IRA, and I took the IRA. Well, I had a 401k. I took the IRA and reverted it to money market. It was over 14000 I took it out for give myself a little break and go see what I wanted to see as far as another state and that kind of thing. So, so you pay taxes, right? And all, all your income and all these jobs, you, you've paid regular income taxes? I have, yes. So your money then goes to fund public safety services in the form of a police department here, right? That's scary because, yes, due to Nevada's question, I think it was question five in the 2016 um, election. Yes, unfortunately, we approved that, I think, as far as construction. Uh, question two was marijuana. We amended it here in Nevada, so we changed it so that we could now sell and distribute marijuana around these public schools. And then question one was about um, the guns, gun rights for everyone here in Nevada. We amended it, meaning we changed it so that everyone has to go through a background check, even if the, w the gun is willed to your family member. So a lot of people don't realize that. It's, you know. Well, so what do you think about your tax dollars going to pay for police services and then you find yourself in an abusive situation where you're actually being, you, you're, so your vehicle was being broken into? It was. Did, did, did you get any appropriate response from law enforcement for that? Uh, no, unfortunately I, didn't ch I did not go to security. I went to my coworkers and told them. I talked to management before. I, I had an exit interview, my own. I, I wanted it. They didn't ask me for it, but I had been there, like I said, 11 years. And I was just tired of it. I mean, I, I enjoyed the job. Mr. Wynn was a great, you know, a great mentor. He taught me a lot about Obamacare and, um, and the rising cost of Obamacare and how that can affect your medical care and dental, et cetera. So what, did you ever contact the police about your vehicle being broken into? Absolutely. Well, not broken into. I, there was a lot of things wrong with it. I, security, yes, as far as I told management. And then there was a problem with the car after that. And um, yes, I have got, as a matter of fact, I'm going through identity theft right now. I have four complaints into the, to the Federal Bureau of Investigation. I see three complaints, there's four of them. I have one into the Justice Department. I have um, 11 complaints into the FCC regarding port numbers that were changed on my computer, my Mitsubishi computer. Um, the FBI says it's not their jurisdictions, it's the, Fed, it's the Federal Trade Commission that would help with identity theft, not the FBI. So, which is fine, which is funny to me because it's an IC3 complaint with the federal government, so why wouldn't they help, but they don't. So how much were you paying in taxes out of your income, if I may ask, just like rough percentage wise? 16%, roughly. So that comes out to quite a lot every year. Yeah, about 13, actually it was 13%. With my CPA, I think it was 13% is what I have on my taxes, yeah. But do you think you're getting your money's worth out of government? I think they take enough of it. Yes, I mean I'm. I'm no, I mean, do you get? Do you get? Do you get? Do you get? Do you, I mean, do you get enough services back? Do you feel like the, the, the people like you who pay taxes for public safety services, for the police, for all these federal agencies that are supposed to be looking out for you in cases of identity theft, in cases of abuse like you were experiencing, do, like do you think? Do, do you think you're getting sufficiently served that that you're getting your your money's worth in terms of? 
not in the sense of the federal government. No, I think that I, and I've told this to many of them. I, t I called Arizona FBI. I've been to the Las Vegas local here, FBI here, to inform them of my port number changes of Cox Cable. They didn't care. And then I called Utah as well, because I know different states and jurisdiction. Um, you know, they just keep telling me, no, I, they can't help. So yeah, it's frustrating. It's as frustrating as, as a taxpayer. It's, it's frustrating as me as a person that reads. I read a lot of books and I'm very well informed. So, yeah. so what, now, just by contrast here, I got I to gotta tell you a quick story because, you know, we, we've been doing these videos today. We, when we first got started, we saw two gentlemen getting harassed by a police officer and then arrested for having snakes in public essentially and apparently they even had a license to do that as street performers and the your tax dollars go to harass street performers go to arrest them go to uh, until marijuana was decriminalized completely here going to you know enforce the drug war and now it's now I mean still other elements of the drug war obviously being enforced D does it bother you that you're you're paying money to government and their government is telling you you should pay it to us because we're gonna make you safe and then they they misspend it on things like that well yes I mean right here in Nevada they're trying to do that with um, the school district I think it's Chris Gilamani she's a Democrat she wants to run for governor S Steve Sislik does too which is a joke I mean he lies they both they all lie and they change land zones here and you know from residential to commercial then back and forth I mean it's all about this in other words you can put a casino there or something there but they change it it's you know just like with the Stephen Paddock situation they've lied they've lied and they've lied they've had to take the case to Florida because they've had so many people as far as witnesses that you know they can't keep the story straight and they now they find out that it's an inside job you can tell by the tile on the floor I, I worked at Mandalay Bay too so, um, you know, I can see it was an inside job, I swear to God. And they patched through, whoever it was, patched through the cameras of the surveillance is what they did. They helped him, meaning Stephen Paddock's. They had, they had to have. But anyway, then, you know. Yeah. So you mentioned the federal government, the various federal agencies that you've turned to for some help in the, the identity fraud and the, and the other legal issues. Have you, gotten, have you gotten any help from the federal government at all in this? Um, well, I currently on EBT. So what happened there was I had someone that took my EBT, put their social security number on my, under my name. I turned it into the Welfare of Nevada uh, fraud unit. They canceled the card, so somebody did do their job there. And then I got another EBT card, which I currently have under my correct social security number in my name. But yes. Do you think that would be better off, if, uh, the people would be better off who are served by the EBT system if it was handled by the state instead of the federal government? Mm, that's a hard thing. I don't want um, anybody telling me that I, have, that I have to have, what is it, Blue Apron? I like to have, you know, I, if I want to eat chips or if I want to have, you know, um, I'm serious, hot dogs and hamburgers or whatever yeah. it is, I, I don't want you telling me I, can ha I have to have Blue Apron as an EBT. Is that, is that a federal requirement? Well, they're trying to do that. They're trying to say now, it was on Fox News uh, with Dana and the Fox 5 that, um, what are, yeah, with Jesse Waters and, and Dana and uh, Kim Gofile and all of them, they were saying that Blue Apron, they want to initiate that. And I'm like, no, you know what, that's for food and that's for people to decide on what they want to spend, you know, maybe they need baby milk, maybe they need, I don't know what it is. But I have no idea, but don't take that away and make us all go on Blue Apron. We don't want that stuff, it's disgusting. <laughs> so do you think we'd be better off as a country without the federal government entirely? Um, no, we need the federal government, we just need to have a fair and balanced government where they're not racist. Um, you know, I'm sorry, but the Obama administration, Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton, everyone wants to blame Hillary from Benghazi, but you can't do it because she gets her orders from the president of the United States. Every secretary of state gets their orders from the secretary, from the president of the United States, which is POTUS, P-O-T-U-S. It's not marijuana, it's the president of the United States. I, I swear to God. So let me ask you a question. If you think government is necessary, what's your definition of government? Hmm, that's a hard decision. Um, well, I'm not a hard question, I should say. Mm, what's my definition of government? Well, isn't it funny the though? The Senate and the Congress, they need to go on Obamacare too. Instead well, of well, and, well, well, gotta, not you're not defining it though. So is, is, I, I just want to point out, isn't isn't it right? Isn't that funny though that, that you know we talk about government all the time and you, we have very strong opinions of it, but we're not taught what it is in, in terms of like uh, being able to so define it. Agency? There's so many different agencies that are so screwed up right now. And I'm, I mean, Fannie Mae, you have the uh, agriculture, you have land and development, you have, you know, like I said, FBI. And everybody doesn't know the FBI, the, the U.S. Marshals, and all U.S. attorneys, those are all covered under the attorney general, the majors, like Loretta Lynch. I loved her because she 
tried to get the Apple phones opened up by the, by the terrorists, and Apple, but they wouldn't do it. But she had the authority to stop Apple. If she really wanted to, she could have. She could have said, you know what? I'm not going to let you run your business, meaning Apple, until you give us the, you know, open up those Apple phones. Because you have to have an attorney general that has telecommunications experience. I'm glad Trump fired this last one. Well, if you don't mind, I want to go back to the bigger question here, though. So could it be that government is a territorial monopoly, right? Because it has, it has a territory. Sometimes it can be. Right. Sometimes well, it can be. Well, it is because it... Who, depending on who's in it. Trump has tried to come in and have both both a Democrat and, and Republican as his cabinet. Well, hold That's on. I want, I, want to get, I want to get to the definition. Okay. So a, a government has a territory, right? And the thing that makes it distinct in that territory is that it's a monopoly on being in charge of certain things, right? Yes. Like you can't, you, you can't want, say... You want to unite people. You don't want to, you, you want to unite races. You don't want to divide them. And right. I think that, you know, in our last administration, certain, certain aspects, they did it. And he's trying to unite everybody. We're tired. We, we as a nation, we're tired of the illegals. We're tired of it. We want the wall. We want the wall built because we want to take care of our people here, and meaning the United States citizens. You have so you have a strong sense of, of this collective, right? That like just by virtue of being a U.S. citizen, you're you're part of your your in group, and if you're not, you're part of the out group. I mean, there's a lot of people that are illegals that are good people. I'm not saying they're, that all all illegals are bad because they're not. They're not. But the thing is, this is we as the United States, we we have grown almost like a third third world country. Our banks are in the in the in the crapper. So where are you from? Where are you from originally? I'm originally from Fort Worth, Texas, but I've lived here in Las Vegas, Nevada, since 1986. Okay, so why would you, coming from Texas, have more right to live in Las Vegas than a Mexican from Tijuana who actually was born I'm closer? A citizen, and they're from Tijuana, and if they want to stay in Mexico, fine. They want they want the same thing I want. But because well, government put a line there, shouldn't shouldn't they have taxes, shouldn't they have Shouldn't they have more of a right to live in Vegas if they were born closer to Vegas? Well, if they're, well, no. I mean, if they're, if they're, well, yeah. I mean, if they're born in Vegas. No, no, they're born in Tijuana, but they're still closer than you were born if you were born in Texas. No, well, Tijuana's having a trouble right now. They're, they, they know about the travel ban. Well, That's but what you're avoiding, you're avoiding the question. Now, what? So you're saying you have a special right. You, as an individual human being, have a right that someone else doesn't have by virtue of where they were born. You're saying you like how government I unites like people? Because Kim Jong-un does the same thing in North Korea. Uh, let's see, is it Ping? I think it's Xi Ping in China. He's the president of China. He does the same, Xi Jinping. He does the same thing. They, 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 their, their country is allowed to pick and choose who they want in their country due to citizenship. Right, well, two, two, wrong, two wrongs don't make a right. I mean, that's, that's not what we're getting at. We're not saying that everybody's, you know, it's not, it's not right for America to do something. We can't go, well, well, it's okay for America to do it because China did it. Mexico, see, a lot of people don't know you can't own land in Mexico on the beach. If you're, if you're a foreigner, you can't do it. You can rent it for 100 years, but as a foreigner, you're not allowed to own land on beachfront property in Mexico. That's their law, not ours. That's their law. Well, hold on, but you're just hold on. Well, I'm looking again at what's the right thing to do here. Car over. If you take your car over and you don't have Mexican insurance and you hit someone or they hit you, guess whose fault it is? Yours. If you don't have the Mexican insurance. Wait, so, so you want to bring people together, though, right? You you saying you, you like that about Obama versus versus Trump? There's uniting people rather than dividing people. Administration. Not very many, but some. But now you're talking about using government to divide people based on the borders and saying if you weren't born, if you're not a citizen. Well, no, you're saying if you're not a citizen. If you weren't born in, 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 these, United in the United States, then you shouldn't have the same rights as people born within the United States. That's using the United States government to divide people with an actual line on the ground and saying... If you're not born in the United States, if you're not a legal citizen, then yes, I should, as a, as a legal citizen here, born in the United States, get preference over an illegal. Yes, Do your I rights come from God or from government? From government and God. Well, which is the higher authority? Well, it would be the Constitution, U.S. Constitution. I mean, Everything God or government? What I'm saying is in the Constitution of the United States. What I'm saying is you have to be an English speaker. It's in the uh, Harlan-Davidson 1966 U.S. Constitution, and it's what every senator and congressman should, ever, should read. And, and it's Harvard, by Harvard. So that's Obama's situation, or uh, Michelle and Obama right there. So, yeah. Well, I don't think there was anything about a wall in, in the Constitution. No wall, but um, China has a wall. Okay, you keep going back to, well, the other people are doing it, so we should do it. We're to do what we want to do in our country. Shouldn't we be better? Shouldn't we be more about freedom? We should be selfish now. We should be selfish. And, and we've been the United States should be selfish. 
yes, as a United States, we should be selfish. Stop giving aid to everybody that's our enemy and keep it here. Give it to our military, our U.S. military, all of it. So that's not in the in the original vision of what the founders of this country wanted. They were against a standing army. They wanted a militia-based defense. So you're, you're, what you're advocating, they wanted, they wanted the, the, the country to be a place where people were free to come and escape tyranny in the old world. And wh what you're actually advocating for in terms of isolationism and militarism is anti-American. I don't believe that, no. No. What does it mean to be American to you? I'm a Republican and I believe in everybody's rights, but I believe in the U.S. citizen first. First and foremost. That's it. So you have okay. special rights. All right, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at thefreedomline.com and we'll share it on my feed.